Good morning, folks. We've got several interesting articles to hit today, including one that may be a bit more than it seems. Got one on the Arctic as well, and a weird event in China. We've also got a check-in on seismicity, and of course, we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. We did get a few eruptive events, not much in the way of solar flaring, however. The big sunspot should be returning in the coming days, but we also had a coronal hole turn across the north this week. That is the source of the space weather at the moment. The solar wind shows a brief spike in particle density followed by a jump up in plasma speed from that coronal hole. It's a moderate stream only. Geomagnetic conditions remain relatively calm. The aesthetic gift from the sun the last day was a helical filament eruption off the departing limb. Impressive release up there. But up next, we go to earthquakes. We had two six-pointers yesterday, one in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and another in Colombia. At least one person is reported to have died during that event, which rang in at magnitude 6.3. Up next, we're off to an article I find a bit goofy. They say that parts of the Arctic are actually seeing more snow and deepening snowpack, which they say is causing more permafrost melt. Of course it is. Everything causes permafrost melt, of course. Not like they've spent years telling us that less snow is the cause of permafrost melt. Nice mental gymnastics on display in this one. A bit more of those cerebral shenanigans in the reporting of the desert static in China. They try to explain away the event as a simple result of cloud electricity and sand, something normal. But they also include the desert guide saying he's never seen anything like it before, which of course suggests it's not so normal. Increased atmospheric electricity has been seen in several parts of the world and is exactly what is expected as more space radiation charged particles enter the earth while our magnetic field is weakening. Last but not least, we're going out to Neptune. They're saying that the clouds on Neptune rise and fall with the solar cycle, driven by enhanced brightness. Now, the instinctual observer response is to remember how many papers there are on solar control of Earth clouds and how if it works way out there, it certainly works here as well. But looking at their data, there may be something else going on, especially since the clouds have disappeared for the last three years, even as we climb back up the sunspot cycle ladder. And it looks nothing like last cycle. More coming on that and potential implications in a later video. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.